Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. He said this to his first disciples at the Last Supper, and he says it now in our hearing, in the gospel we have just heard. If you love me, you will keep my word. It's relatively easy to say with our lips, I love you, Jesus, or to say to others, I do love God. But love will prove itself in being more than just words we say. St. Ignatius of Loyola taught that love is proved in deeds, not words. When Jesus speaks of us keeping his word, he's referring to his teaching and example of what kind of God we put our faith in and what kind of life we should live in order to honour, obey and show our love for God. Loving God and doing what God wants are essentially linked. We cannot separate them. Indeed, just a few minutes before saying what we hear in today's Gospel, Jesus had said at the same Last Supper, I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The same St. John who delivers this teaching of Jesus from the Last Supper's conversations, also writes, in his first letter, in the first letter of St. John, he says, If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And we have this commandment from him, whoever loves God must love his brother as well. Love of God love of neighbour. These two, we know, go together. How much we love God is not visible to the world. It remains, for the most part, hidden in our hearts, seen only by God. How much we love neighbour, how we serve and give and forgive, that is visible to God and to others. Others who will see that our lives are shaped by the teaching and example of Jesus. To tell someone that we greatly love God won't bring them much closer to him, but to show them that love in action can have a mighty effect. It is a powerful witness, and that's the kind of love that shone forth in the lives of any of the saints. But the opposite is also true. If we say we love God, but our lives do not follow his way, if we are content to live in as much sin and hatred and darkness as any other person who does not know or does not have Christ, then we give a counter witness to the Lord. With our lips we may proclaim how wonderful Jesus is, but with our lives we proclaim that there is nothing that special about him at all. Then there is a particular danger too for those who love God greatly and sincerely, but they forget that this love must spill over into our daily lives. They might gladly spend all day in the church or in prayer meetings declaring their love for God, but they would do so at the neglect of their daily or even vocational duties. And that's not great witness at all. There is a time to give ourselves exclusively to God, one-to-one -one in prayer and adoration and time spent with him. But there is a time, too, for giving ourselves to God by giving ourselves up to love and serve the people he has brought into our lives. For example, the man who declares his love for God by spending an hour in the adoration chapel continues to show and prove his love for God when he goes home after his holy hour and gives every other hour over to the living out of his vocation as a husband or father. For that is what God wants. And as I've already said, loving God and doing what God wants are essentially linked. We cannot separate them. Our focus on one 
should not be to the exclusion or neglect of the other. Sometimes I think that many married people do not appreciate fully how awesome is their calling from God and what a service they render to the church and the world by being together in the sacrament of marriage and the family that might flow from that union. Pope John Paul II spoke about this when he visited Ireland back in 1979. This is what he said. Dear fathers and mothers of Ireland, believe in your vocation, that beautiful vocation of marriage and parenthood which God has given to you. Believe that God is with you. Do not think that anything you will do in life is more important than to be a good Christian father or mother. The future of the church, the future of humanity, depend in great part on parents and on the family life that they build in their homes. Now, obviously, the Pope was speaking in particular of families with children. But even if, unfortunately, a couple do not have children, they still do bear witness to their love of God by their love for one another. In the same speech, Pope John Paul said, married people must believe in the power of the sacrament that makes them holy. The sacrament of marriage. Married people must believe in the power of the sacrament to make them holy. They must believe in their vocation to witness through their marriage to the power of Christ's love. To any husbands and wives listening to me, love the Lord and love your spouse, and you will be fulfilling such a vital service of love to the church, more precious than any of the other ways in which you might serve her. By all means, step up and serve in the parish. By all means, join prayer groups if it's not hurting your family life. But know that the most important way you serve, and one which you should never relegate to a lower position, is to love at home. Charity, love, charity begins at home. And in your home, in your home life, love is spelt T-I-M-E. Time. Mother Teresa said, Whatever you do for your family, your children, your husband, your wife, you do for God. Yesterday, I was reading something from a homily of St. Augustine on the necessity of praising God. But I thought I could easily swap the word praise for love in what he wrote. And this is what that would look like. Love God with the whole of yourselves. It is not only your tongue and voice that should declare your love for him, but your conscience, your life, your deeds. We are loving God at this moment when we are gathered together in the church. When we leave to go home, do we cease loving him? Provided we do not cease living a good life, we love God continually. You stop loving God only when you turn aside from what is good and what pleases him. For if you never turn aside from a holy life, though your tongue may be silent, your life speaks out loud. <laughs>